Well, hello, fellow Sojourners, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriating the Culture. I thought I'd start this episode today by opening in prayer. O oh God of pronouns, we give praise to the Great One, the one who was identifiable as God. I am what I am, you say, the great they, the incarnate he and she, the God of trans being. Impregnating Mary, fathering God, breastfeeding God of many breasts, you, shadow, you shatter all stereotypes, making every single person male and female. Male and female, intersex, non-binary, in your image, exactly in your image. Spectrum, rainbow God, who put your promise for nonviolence in the symbol for queer love before humanity knew, because you knew. Who had Joseph, who could not sleep with a woman in a beautiful lady's cloak, perhaps of rainbow colors, before we knew, you knew. God of pronouns, who said, you can call me he or she or they, whatever makes you feel closest to me. Invisible and visible God, on this day, where visibility and celebration, belated, belatedness, affirmation, and acceptance is the bare minimum. Remind us that you are the God of pronouns, so you affirm and you celebrate them. God of Saul, Paul, Simon, Isaac, Jacob, Isaac, Simon, Peter, Abram, and Sarai, and Abraham, and Sarah, God of Joseph, of the coat of many colors, of the Ethiopian eunuch, of the Virgin Mary, God of all found families in the Bible, remind us that you affirm us in our full identi identity, name, pronoun, found family, all of it. For this, we give you thanks and praise to the great I am, the great they, them. Thank you, God. And so in the now, now in the words that our mother, our father, and our sibling God taught us to pray and pray with us now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh boy. I'm Pastor Shane, and I'll be your exorcist today as we appropriate some culture. <laughs> So that was a prayer from PCUSA Church made in honor of Transgender Day of Visibility. Let's break down the game film. It starts off with some gibberish. O oh God of pronouns, we give praise to the Great One, the one who was identifiable as God. I am what I am, you say, the Great They, the incarnate He and She, the God of trans being. Okay, so first of all, God is not a they. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Please respect his pronouns. Now, I understand that the Trinity can be confusing, that God is three persons in one, but to say they is to suggest that there are multiple gods, which is heresy, or that there are multiple forms of God, which is also heresy, called modalism. Second of all, the incarnate he and she. If you're referring to the incarnation, it's only he and that Jesus was a man. Please respect his pronouns. If you mean God is the embodiment of maleness and femaleness in the sense that both males and females are created in in his image, okay, uh, but that's not transgenderism. There isn't body-person conflict within God. And thirdly, what on earth does God of trans being mean? Let's go to the dictionary. The prefix trans means one, beyond. God is God of beyond being. No, he isn't. 
He exists. We exist too. God is God of through or transcends being. God transcends being. No, again, he exists. We exist. Three, God is God of referring or relating to people who sense a personal identity and gender does not correspond with her birth sex. Hard to see how that applies in that God wasn't born and has no sex. But if we're referring to the Incarnation and the God-Man, still no. Four, God is the God of denoting molecules with trans arrangements of substituents. That's gibberish, but it still makes the most sense. She continues. Impregnating Mary, fathering God. Impregnating Mary? You're making it sound like God had sexual relations with Mary, like the way Greek and Roman gods had intercourse with human women. That's not Christianity, but please, creep us out some more. Breastfeeding God of many breasts. No, you're thinking of, like, Artemis. Or possibly the chick from Total Recall. Now, apparently, this stems from a translation of El Shaddai, El being God or Lord, and according to some, Shaddai relates to the word breast. Really changes the tone of that Amy Grant song. But conventionally, Shaddai is translated as Almighty. Now, if the suggestion by calling God multi-breasted is to infer that God is the creator and sustainer of all life, well, then that's actually the most sensical thing you've said thus far. But it goes on. Shadow, you shatter all stereotypes, making every single person Male and female. Male and female, intersex, non-binary, in your image. Exactly in your image. He didn't shatter the stereotypes. He's the author of the stereotypes. He's the one who made and established the created order. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. He didn't shatter the categories, he made the categories. He established the categories and declared it good. It's literally the first chapter of the Bible. Anyway, go on. Spectrum, rainbow God, who put your promise for nonviolence in the symbol for queer love before humanity knew, because you knew. Who had Joseph, who could not sleep with a woman in a beautiful lady's cloak, perhaps of rainbow colors, before we knew, you knew. Okay, the rainbow is not a promise of nonviolence. It's a promise that God is not going to destroy the earth in a flood. Here's the actual statement. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of a covenant between me and all the earth. It's not a promise of nonviolence, and you would know that if you read the Bible, because there is plenty of violence from the hand of God after the flood, and there will be more violence. See Revelation. Second of all, you're clearly trying to claim Joseph was gay, even though Joseph was married and had multiple children. And it was not that Joseph could not sleep with a woman. He's physically capable. See his wife and children. It's that Joseph would not sleep with another man's wife. See how strikingly twisted this is? What's meant to be a demonstration of Joseph's moral character, his righteousness and godliness in resisting temptation is obliterated by denying the temptation and chalking it up to Joseph's sexual quirks. Potiphar's wife is just barking up the wrong tree. Because for the spectrum rainbow god, not acting on every single sexual impulse or urge you have is the real sin. The Christian virtues of chastity, monogamy, fidelity, and self-control are nothing but the evils of repression. Next. God of pronouns who said you can call me he or she or they, whatever makes you feel closest to me. Nowhere in the Bible did God ever say that. But it's funny that this prayer ends with the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus offers as a means of teaching us how to pray, which starts with our Father. God's preferred pronouns, the ones that he prefers to use in describing himself, are seemingly the only preferred pronouns that we don't have to respect. Yeesh. Next. Invisible and visible God, on this day, where visibility and celebration, belated, belatedness, 
affirmation, and acceptance is the bare minimum. Remind us that you are the God of pronouns, so you affirm and you celebrate them. God of Saul, Paul, Simon, Isaac, Jacob, Isaac, Simon, Peter, Abram, and Sarai, and Abraham, and Sarah. God of Joseph, of the coat of many colors, of the Ethiopian eunuch, of the Virgin Mary, God of all found families in the Bible. Remind us that you affirm us in our full identi identity, name, pronoun, found family, all of it. Yes, when I read the Bible, my takeaway is about God's celebration, affirmation, and acceptance of our lifestyle. Like when God affirmed the world with a flood, or when he super duper affirmed Sodom and Gomorrah, or his affirmation of Egypt with the ten celebrations, and then went on to affirm the heck out of the Canaanites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, Jebusites, Parasites, Hethites, I mean just a thorough affirming. And of course the history of the nation of Israel is just non-stop affirmation and celebration of the choices, behavior, lifestyle, and the acceptance of who they are and what they love. So God then becomes incarnate in the person of Jesus to come down to earth to say, you're awesome, you're doing great, keep it up. That's a clear, straightforward reading of scripture, or as Jesus put it, Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. No way, that's actually the opposite of what you said. Turns out being a disciple of Jesus is not about affirming yourself, it's about denying yourself, it's about losing yourself and taking on Christ. There is identity at play, but it looks nothing like this. Now I bring this ludicrous prayer to the forefront because I think it's a potent reminder of how a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough, as the Apostle Paul put it. There's a desire in us to be loving and compassionate and to care for the downtrodden. Them. But we are not more loving than God. And what God says to us, what God tells us in his word is loving to us. You twist a little bit of his word because you want to be affirming and accepting and suddenly, before you know it, your church is worshiping a multi-breasted pagan God who has sex with Mary, who gives birth to a gender-confused Jesus, who is only there to tell us how awesome we are and to celebrate and affirm us. And oh yeah, Joseph was gay. When you think you're more loving and compassionate than God and so start twisting or ignoring his word, then there is no limiting principle. Well, that's it for today. I feel like I need a shower. As usual, if you like what we're doing here, share this post, tell a friend, like, subscribe, rate, and review, and I'll see you next week for more Appropriate in the Culture.